Get ready for another epic recap video. This one, Magnus Carlsen, Maxime Vachelagrov, the semi-final matchup to determine who qualifies to play against Hikaru Nakamura in the 2020 Speed Chess Championship Finals. There were so many plot twists and turns throughout this match. I've got a live scoreboard update uh, that I will keep for you. Let's jump into it. Uh, first things first, we are going to begin with the first game of 5 plus 1, and a friendly reminder, they play 90 minutes of this format, 5 minute with 1 second bonus time, 1 hour of 3 plus 1, and 30 minutes of 1 plus 1 chess. In the very first game of the match, Magnus Carlsen began playing into the MVL Grunfeld. Grunfeld is, uh, what this man eats, breathes, sleeps, repeats, and the Nidorf. So, Carlsen starts out with this system, where you take on d5 and play queen a4 check. Not very popular, but a move all the same. The point being that you want to force your opponent to put the knight out to c6. Magnus plays e4, forces the knight to move, and then has to move his queen back to c2. This looks like a temporary sacrifice of a pawn, and it very well could be, actually. MVL doesn't even take, not going into Magnus's bait. We get d5, knight b4, queen goes to b3, hitting the knight, a5, a3, knight comes back. Magnus pops the bishop out to g5, just to have some pressure on the pawn here with the queen standing in the, uh, in the center of the board. MVL rotates the knight over to c5 to attack Magnus's queen. Queen c2, pawn a4 from MVL as he secures the square for b3. Rook d1, Magnus no concern with this. Bishop g4, the final piece has been developed with some pressure on the knight. Bishop e2, knight b3, and the first clash. Bishop e3, takes on f3. G takes f3. Magnus says, I don't care about basic principles. I'm not going to play bishop takes and try to castle. I'm going to keep my king in the center of the board. I think he's safer there. MVL plays queen d7, looking at queen h3. h4, not letting the queen go to h3 now that the rook defends. e5, knight b5. We've got a target on c7. Rook c8, h5. We're pushing on this side of the board. H, uh, f5, take, 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 boom. Dynamite strikes. Magnus. Jumping into the territory, threatening bishop c4 check. After c takes d6, the quiet move, queen to d3. Sidestepping the danger here, and d6 is collapsing. Knight c4, and here a gorgeous, gorgeous move from uh, Magnus. Sacrificing the queen, but the king glued in by the rook in the corner. The bishop, rook f7, knight takes d6, and it takes Magnus Carlsen 27 moves to strike first, an uppercut KO of MVL in his very own Grunfeld, and the score is 1-0. Magnus would also strike in the second game of this match, in the 5 plus 1, and he didn't just take a 1-0 lead. Magnus started out the match with a very convincing 2-0. So with this, we move ahead to game number 3 where Magnus again has the white pieces. Can he take a solid grasp on the lead early on, we go to another Grunfeld, something that looks familiar. You'll notice uh, these guys, they play uh, pretty consistently the openings in these matches because if they find a weakness, you better be damn sure that they are going to apply pressure to that weakness. MVL this time plays bishop d7, queen slides to a3, and bishop c6. MVL says the other way, it didn't go well, I'm gonna go for this. Magnus just begins chugging straight away with the h-pawn. Knight a6, queen slides over to b3, queen d6, maintaining stability in the center. b7 is not actually under any pressure. h6, bishop f6, and Magnus goes for e4. But MVL here comes up with a clever idea and plays a4, completely disregarding that the knight is hanging and striking back at Magnus's center. Queen c2, take, take, and e5. Both players content to leave their kings in the center of the board, potentially looking a little bit uh, counterintuitive, but... Things are, uh, are still moving uh, quite okay here. So e5, but Magnus with the advantage chops away the knight. And he does that because what this does is it allows him to castle. He trades away his bishop for the knight, and now he castles his king. So does MVL, rook d1, and the central trade. Of course, of course, this looks kind of nice for Magnus, but it's difficult to make any forward progress because if you play d5, uh, I'm going to take your rook. So really, your, your one threat is e5. But now I sidestep. If you play e5 now, then maybe I even take on f3 and damage your structure. The difference with the last game is you've already castled. Your king's not in the middle. 
So rookie one, rookie eight, Magnus puts the knight in the center. Here MVL can take, but instead plays bishop b5 because he feels like the center is about to completely collapse from Magnus and it's not worth the trade of the bishop. Bishop f4, c5. Beautiful, destabilizing the center by sacrificing a pawn. Rook b1, rook a5. A bit of a weird thing going on here. Magnus finds bishop d2. I was like, what are you doing, MVL? What are you doing? Cd4, MVL sacrifices a rook to win the knight. But here, Magnus plays bishop c7. The queen has to hang on to this bishop, right? So he goes queen g5, queen c1. Magnus going for the queen trade, but doesn't realize that now the bishop sidesteps danger. Actually, here, Magnus had a lights out move. He could have played bishop to f4. The point is that if black takes, rook takes b5, and if you try to go for something like mate, I just laugh at you. I play g3, you gotta take my pawn. I take b7, rook for bishop, baby. Queen c4, queen f7, maybe f4 in the future, cruising. But Magnus plays queen c1. This allows MVL to get out of danger, all right? Now he's still losing, but he's still got pieces on the board. e5, bishop slides out of danger, bishop slides out of danger, MVL plays queen e6, and Magnus Carlsen loses on time. Uh, 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 something we, what? How, how, excuse me? Magnus Carlsen in a totally winning position Flags, his time hit zero. MVL back in it with a two to one lead. MVL would then go on to win the next game as well, okay? So now MVL is square at two to two. So games three and four go to MVL. Game five, a draw, finally, some peace after four decisive games. And so after five games in the five plus one, it is 2.5, 2.5 a piece. It's all square. We now go to game number six, okay? Game number six in the five plus one section and Magnus Carlsen now with the black pieces. We've got e4 and he goes for c6. And this is kind of a, an invitation for one of the sides to trade the queens. And white is a touch better because you've played the, the pawn here so black can't naturally develop with knight c6. But Magnus plays queen c7, then he takes and plays bishop g4, just going for a unique, unbalanced kind of a structure, okay? We get h3, and the thing is that in this kind of a position, white is a little bit ahead in development always, and it's not so easy for black to develop, like, to the queen side, because if you castle long, now I take the pawn on a7. Not to mention that since you're not very developed in the beginning, I would have just played, like, over here with my pawns and started some sort of attack. So now MVL plays the move d4, taking control of the center, long castle, c3, king b8, and like I said, right on cue, he plays for b4. Knight f6, that knight used to control the e5 square, so knight to e5. Bishop slides back to g6, the other knight goes to c5. MVL looks like he's flying here, he is plastering the horses in the middle of the board like, let's go, let's go. Magnus doesn't have a single piece past the third rank, right? Like, everything is in this little rectangle, so knight d5. Little sidestep with the queen. Bishop d6, bishop c4. The bishop's coming out as well. Bishop takes e5, he takes with the rook. Knight goes back to b6, we don't want to get our bishop taken, so we slide out of danger. I would be very, very, uh, I'd be very ready for this. But now Magnus plays knight d7, he's not so ready to just get run over. So rook comes back to e2, take, and here you take with a b pawn, obviously. You want to keep the center closed, don't want this rook to get in, and this also will allow you to attack on the b file in the future. Just don't play rook b1, because that hangs a rook in one move. Hey, I see you. I can read minds. So we get rook e8, rook e1, and MVL decides to trade off this bishop. He thinks that this is going to be the best way to play. Magnus breaks in the middle, and now MVL says, uh, what? I'm not going to go on that attack anymore. Uh-uh. We're going to look at down the middle now. Queen e4, g6. Pawn takes e5, right? Now the point is, if you take on e5, uh, I, I probably will just take. And uh, two rooks are, are not always worth a queen, but in this case, they sure are. Because, for example, a6, I got, like, rook e7. Where are you going? Queen f4? I'm going I'm to I'm I'm get you. I'm getting this pawn. Once you lose that pawn, you lose all the other pawns. Once you lose all the other pawns, you lose the game. So Magnus cannot take back. He's just down a clear pawn, and MVL starts breaking through. e6 shatters everything. Look at that. Splits the pawns. Beautiful. Queen f6 isolates the pawns and starts picking them up. Magnus Carlsen getting outplayed in the endgame. What is this? 2037 or something? I mean, I don't... MVL just gliding here. 
pawn up, clean pawn two, rook e8, king c7, and rather than going to hide over here, Magnus Carlsen blunders a checkmate. It's just the mating net. He's got to get out of this with queen c6. Magnus Carlsen loses by hanging a checkmate. I mean, he was already struggling quite a bit in the endgame. He could have played king to a7, but MVL, down two games, is now a game ahead. The last two games of this section were drawn, which means that MVL ended the 5 plus 1 with a 1 point advantage over Magnus Carlsen. MVL is up 4.5 to 3.5 after this portion. Okay? Now, the 3 plus 1 was a bloodbath. We're actually going to jump ahead to the fourth game. Okay? But prior to this, all right? Prior to game number four, the first game they drew, so it was 5 4. Then MVL won, so it was 6 4. Then Magnus won, so it was 6 5. So we're going to jump ahead to this, to this point in the match when it's game four of the 3 plus 1 and it's 6 5. MVL is clinging on to a one-game lead, all right? Now, fourth game of the 3 plus 1 section. E4, E5. This one's going to be something a bit more standard. It's a Spanish opening, a classical Rui Lopez. We've seen this. This is a bit of a new twist uh, with A3 and Knight C3. Uh, the goal for white here is to uh, fight for the D5 square. Uh, black plays Knight B8 which looks like Magnus is just undeveloping his piece because he's trying to set up the board for the next game. But the point is that in many of these positions, you'll reroute the knight this way, sometimes to c5. Um, in closed positions like this, you can afford these sort of maneuvers. Magnus uh, begins kind of more active play as, the, as this game progresses. He takes on a2, rook a2, and rotates the knight back to e6 to fill the void that the light squared bishop had. As the middle game progresses a bit further, he trades the rooks on the A-file and plays queen c6. Now, in the next few moves, the position begins opening up. First, MVL goes for this break. They trade. Magnus immediately rotates to see all this free dark squares on the queen side. Now, MVL just has a very clear weakness on d3. All this pawn pushing, right? Every pawn push leads to some sort of weakness and has to play more passively. Now Magnus takes full control of the b-file, knight c3, and goes for the trade of the dark squared bishops. Shows you a high level understanding, because what that will do is it'll leave dark squared real estate, and the pawn on h3 will be weak. Take, take. MVL trades his bishop for the knight, but this is even better for Magnus, because now Magnus can rotate the bishop to the other side of the damn board! That's the power of the bishop. You know how long it would take a knight to travel that distance? It takes a bishop two squares. All right, two, 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 two easy stops. Now he trades because queen b1 is coming down. MVL probably thought that he had knight e1 in this position hanging on to this, but it's not because you could just take it. You just take it. The knight is not actually protecting because of the pin, and you would just be a pawn down with check. Queen comes back to b4 in defense. So now Magnus is just cruising. MVL begins fighting back, but Magnus is completely winning. Full pawn up here. Queen c8, he's going for queen f5 MVL, looking for, uh, to save himself. Knight f6, c5, take. Queen c5, knight g4, but then knight takes e5. And I think what Magnus thought here is queen e4 is winning because it's a fork, but somehow it's not. Like, somehow MVL's surviving this. So Magnus goes queen f5, and MVL finds f4, gluing it all shut. Here, Magnus Carlsen, in completely astounding fashion, doesn't play the move f6. f6 pins the pawn. Well, the queen is pinning the pawn, right? And the knight has no move. It cannot go here or here to guard the queen because both moves would get taken. Magnus at this point does not play f6. He gives a check, which is still good. But then he plays knight e3. The only move here that does not lose for MVL, queen c6. The whole diagonal is defended. And if you play queen f5 check, I just go back and I'm safe. You're not mating me anymore. Magnus goes uh, queen b1, queen f3, things down to a few seconds on the clock. And I don't know if it was a mouse slip or what happened, but he played queen to g6 and hung his queen. End the game. So from minus five, just a few moves earlier, Magnus Carlsen blunders a queen after losing on time, after blundering a mating net. A 
Anything that can happen is happening. MVL takes a seven to five lead. Something that, what? I mean, what is happening? What is happening? Game five of this three, to, uh, of, of the three plus one went to Magnus. He won it. It was six, seven. Okay, game six of the three plus one went back to MVL. It was eight to six. And now we're gonna take a look at the last two three plus one games to determine what's going on before we hit the bullet section. All right, we've got game number seven. Okay, we're coming off uh, another MVL pull away. Can Magnus Carlsen strike back? We get a bishop's very already non-standard Sicilian kind of a thing. Um, and this one was, uh, was a long, complicated game. You'll notice there, the pieces don't interact until like move 13, a simple trade, knight d5, and Magnus Carlsen is a, is a little bit better here because black has two bishops that are not really doing too much. That knight on d5 is, is standing nice and pretty. So he goes to trade it and Magnus plays for a4. If you have a light squared bishop and a knight versus two bishops, you are a little bit better on the light squares because you have two pieces who can fight for the light squares, whereas black only has one. The dark squared bishop doesn't see half the board. And so you'll notice in this game that Magnus Carlsen kind of focuses on these light squares, right? He, he isolates the knight versus bishop situation, and then he just prods and prods at the light squared weaknesses. This forces MVL into a situation where the knight is glued together and pressuring the d6 pawn. And as the end game develops, look at how Magnus crawls his king over to the queen side, right? Defending it is perfect. It's like Magnesian. Rook b1, now we move the rook. Rook f7, the king comes back and comes back to defend f2. Now the rook goes to a3 and every move the man plays, it, 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 it's, it's perfect. Everything, everything. It's like an artist. H4, king goes back to d2, now the rook goes, flies away to a8 because the pawn is not under attack since you have the bishop hanging. Now the king is just in time to defend the pawn, so the rook can do its dirty work, right? There's a little bit of shuffling here as the nature of bullet, uh, sorry, blitz, but now MVL goes for an endgame where it's rook and four pawns versus rook and five, which should be drawn, but watch how Magnus makes him suffer for it. Rook e6, the trade. Now this pawn, that's the, that guy is who we need to get. MVL fights to just nonstop to just cut the king off from getting closer. How many times Magnus offers a trade of rooks? Because king and four versus king and three is winning. He just, he uses the, tra the constant threat, look, see, of the trade of the rooks. Then he trades a pawn, isolating that pawn in his sights. That pawn is forever going to be a target. The difference with this pawn is that this pawn's not a target. King is isolated. And the rook is in prime position, right? Prime position to just, to just pressure constantly. And it was right here, this lazy move by MVL, which allowed Magnus to give a check and get the king just in time to c4, defending his pawn on g2, and he's got the perfect setup, and he cleans it up by giving one more check King has to guard the pawn, one more check, and while the rook is trying to get this, the king gets this, and here, MVL, after 77 moves of defense, resigns. He is now two pawns down, and he doesn't want to play this one. Magnus Carlsen, eight to seven. Can he tie it up in the final 3-1 game? All right, let's see what happens. It's an E4, E5, another Spanish, this one a Berlin with knight E4. Berlin is one of the oldest main lines where the queens are traded. You want to learn more about the Berlin, uh, Google Germany. No, uh, you want to learn more about the Berlin opening, Kasparov Kramnik World Championship match. Now, I'm not going to get into the intricacies of the theory. Both players are playing kind of their, their creme de la creme. And I, I suppose really here is the big first question. Magnus sacks a pawn. And he sacks a pawn to create a weakness. And then a lot of trades happen, leaving him uh, with recapturing of the pawn. But e6 now, a nice little move. Rook can't take because it's staying guarding this. And the bishop is open, pressuring g7. Take, rook g4. Look at that. GM's taking advantage of changes in position. Knight is hit. Knight e7. Apparently, the move that Magnus Carlsen had to play was the very, uh, very obvious 
Knight back to h8. That's a joke. It's not obvious at all. It's one of the ugliest moves I've ever seen in my life. But the engine is a scumbag who just believes in such moves. All right. Instead, Magnus plays the much more natural move, but accidentally blunders the x-ray. So sometimes you have to play knight to h8. You know, Magnus probably was looking at g7 quite a bit, but look at this. Chomp, chomp, and an x-ray. A forcing move, leaving Magnus with simply a piece down. And MVL slowly converted the position, trading off a pawn, leaving a pawn isolated by itself. Uh, Magnus can create counterplay with his three pawns versus this one, which is how you should create counterplay in an endgame where you're down a piece. But trading too many pieces will leave you in a spot where it's, you know, and, and again, look at the active king. You'll notice the kings are always activated. Magnus here played a3 and just resigned the game. This pawn is not going to become a queen. Uh, Bishop d4 constantly controls the promotion, as well as moves like rook c5, for example, which uh, if you play a2, I can check you, king b5, and get back in time. And, you know, it looks like your king is getting in. It, it's, it's never get, it, it, it'll never happen. It's just, you can't, nothing. Rook comes out, push the pawns, we are winning. And MVL, just taking what's given to him, nine to seven. 9-7, to seven. he wins both of the first sections, 4.5, 3.5. Magnus now has to overcome a two-point deficit as we begin the bullet. And I'm actually going to take you through the story of the first four games of bullet uh, and show you the last, uh, the last four. There was eight games of bullet total. The first four games went like this. The first one was a draw, so it was 7.5 to 9.5. Okay? In the next two games, MVL won both. MVL won both games. He is now up four games. This is something completely unprecedented that absolutely nobody imagined was going to happen. A four game lead for Maxime Vachet Le Graf. There is about 15 minutes on the timer of the remaining 30 minutes. Um, yeah. He's up four games. Now, game four of the bullet was a draw. So it was draw, two wins for MVL, and then another draw, and the score is eight to 12. They're ready to go home. Everybody's ready to go home. Magnus says, y'all must have forgot who I am. We begin with game five. Magnus Carlsen pipes out into the mainline Nidorf plays bishop g5, and really things get kind of heated. I'm going to go to move 14. He castles queenside. MVL plays knight e5, f3. Knight comes back. Knight d4. Rook c8. King b1. Bishop to c4, planting it on c4. If this trade comes in, the queen will be hit. Magnus says, knight f5, hitting your bishop. MVL says, king f8. Chop, 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 knight g6. Chop on h8. Bishop h8. Queen comes in. Magnus Carlsen, we ready. We coming. We gonna hunt you down. We down four games, but here it comes. King e8, bishop c4, bc4, knight d5. MVL says, uh-uh, not done. Rook b8, hello. What's up, b2 pawn? Here Magnus says, knight takes e7. What's up, MVL? You gonna take my knight? Queen h8, knight f6. What's coming? Except he blunders, bishop takes b2. The game is now minus 12. Maxime vachet Legrave is up 12 points of material here because there is no check. You cannot check him anywhere. Every square is protected. Magnus plays c3. Here, if MVL had played the move queen to a5, it would have led to a mate in a few moves. He would have had to survive a little king walk. He would have given a mate. Instead, MVL played bishop c3, allowing Magnus's king to go for a little walk and take the bishop. He takes the, he takes the knight on e7, the, uh, the knight on e7, yes. Queen d2, queen c5 defending on d6. Knight d5 check. King goes to e8, queen c3. We still looking at these squares and we're protecting our king. All right, knight e5, f4, get out of here. Queen f2 check, we trade the queens. Magnus now goes rook d4 and takes the pawn. Knight e1 check, he says, I don't care about this pawn because I got rook a4, who's guarding this? Rook b2, king up to c3. Rook f2, f5. You're not taking that. You're not taking that. I don't care. You're not taking that. King d4. You're not taking that. You're not taking that. 
Uh-uh-uh, you must have forgot a Mag I'm Magnus Carlsen. Let's push my pawn. King c4. Get out of the checks. Push the pawn. Move the king to a safer square. Push the pawn so the king is isolated on the back rank. A6. Push the pawn. Give a check. King goes in front. A7. G. G. MVL resigns. Magnus Carlsen's got nine points. Next game. Magnus Carlsen with the black pieces. Plays the Alakine. He's got to win. He's going to mix it up. It's a main line. Both sides castle. C5 breaking in the center. Chop, chop. Imbalance of the position. MVL's trying to keep things cool, calm, and collected. Magnus Carlsen is trying to do the opposite by moving his rook to the center of the board. Why? He has to win. He's got absolutely no time to waste. He's got to win these games. Queen g3 comes in with the knight and comes in with the knight again. Chop, chop. B4, rook d3. Hello, you got a weakness. Rook c1, bishop h6. Hello, you got a weakness. Rook e1, queen d6, c4, c5, you got a weakness. B5, rook e3. Beautiful. Dynamite strikes on e3. A temporary sacrifice leading to a, tr to, a, to a transformation of the position where Magnus is up a pawn, but he's dealing with the looming threat of the pawn promoting. Rook b3, rook a1. Hello, you got a weakness. That's two pawns. Signed, Magnus Carlsen. b5 is weak. b6, take. Push the pawn. Pawn's going through. Take, take. Hello, I got six pawns. You got two. That's a difference of four. Do these even count as pawns, by the way? Maxime, really? You got like one and a half pawns. E6. Push the pawn. Push the pawn. Bring the king. Push the pawn so your pawns ain't going anywhere. Push the pawn. Make sure that everything is safe and you can't take. Push the pawn. Get the rook down here. We hunting. We hunting and we trying to push our pawns through. Rook D1. Hello. Rook D2. Hello. 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 King is coming. That's the last piece missing of the puzzle. The king is coming. The king is coming. The king is coming. D did I tell you I had six pawns, by the way? I got six pawns. I could push all of them as I please. King is coming. Rook slides back for defense. That's kind of an underwhelming move, but the threat is C2 check. Push the pawn. Sack the pawn. We take in all the pawns. That's it. We're up a bunch of pawns. We need to get this. Look at that. Three versus the bishop. MVL, you are not surviving this endgame. And that's exactly what happens. The ride. There we go. Push. Bring the king. Bring the rook. Push the pawns. Look at this. Methodical. Oh my gosh. It's like a police escort. And the game ends on move 80. The rook is overloaded. It can't guard the bishop in the square. Rook takes f5. Magnus Carlsen wins again. Magnus Carlsen is within two. It's 10 to 12, ladies and gentlemen. It's 10 to 12. There's about five minutes of game clock left. If Magnus Carlsen wins the next game, and there is still time on the clock, and the next game starts, it counts. If Magnus wins that game too, it's equal. We go to tie breaks. Here we go. You ready? I'm ready. I hope you're ready. If you made it this far, I don't know. You, you are for sure watching to the end. Here we go. Game seven of the bullet. Magnus Carlsen. Karakhan from MVL? He doesn't play that opening. He must have mouse slipped. He only plays Sicilian. Advance Caro. Getting out all into the... the all right. What is, what, what is happening? The bishop is trapped. But we get CD4, Knight D4. Huh? Huh? You know, what, you know what was missed here? Something beautiful. Knight takes E5. Uh, I believe there was like some sort of tactic here. For example, if Knight E5, uh, G takes F5 here. Uh, there is queen takes d4, which is really cool. Queen d4 and knight f3 check. I remember something like this. At the end of all of it, though, you still lose the knight on g6. But there were tactics in this position that MVL could have played, for example, like this, uh, to really put Magnus under some pressure. But MVL uh, sacrificed his bishop early for this, and uh, he's just a piece down. He's just a piece down. He got his bishop trapped, and he didn't find the tactic to get out of it. And now it's time for Magnus Carlsen to do what he does best, which is beat people. Like physically. And on the chessboard. Magnus starts coming forward. Castles rook d1. MVL is scrambling to defend, but he's not in time. Knight a5. Castles on move 25, like all beginners should. Knight e5. f4. Simplify. 
knight b7. Rook comes up, knight slides, pawn is up, rook c7. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Rook d6. MVL says, I got a pawn too, man. I just, okay. <laughs> what? What is? That's not, that's not a pawn. Another position where a guy has an extra piece for some pawns. However, this is very different than the last game. Although this is MVL's best chance. Last game it was three pawns versus a bishop. Here it's uh, it's also three pawns versus a bishop, but it's a little bit of a different story because they're not completely isolated. They still have a pawn in their way. Not to mention that, well, he just lost one of his pawns in a very underwhelming way. And now Magnus Carlsen is scrambling because there's like two minutes on the clock. He got to win this game quick. And he does. Maxime loses every pawn that he has uh, in, in, in the nerves and the heat of the moment. And Magnus hangs on for dear life to his remaining pawn, walks his king all the way to support it, and it's going. I mean, it's just going. And this pawn is in the line of sights of both of these pieces. And that's it. Magnus Carlsen wins a third straight game for the first time in the entire match. There is a minute left on the clock. It is 12 to 11. Here we go. If MVL draws or wins this game, he makes it to the final. If Magnus wins, we have a tie break. I told you this was going to be good. Text a friend, call him up, say, what are you doing? Why haven't you watched the Gotham Chess recap? And why aren't you sub to his YouTube channel, by the way? All right, here we go. Magnus Carlsen with the black pieces. What does he do if he has to play for a win? He goes for a modern defense. Hyper-modern system where he plays the position in a bit of a weird way. We get castles, c5, chop, chop. MVL says, ooh, look at that. Take my pawn, Magnus. I'm trying to play bishop before. Magnus, I don't need your damn pawn. MVL says, no, I insist. Take my pawn. Magnus says, well, you know, at this point, I, yeah, I prob probably have to because otherwise. Okay, I'm going to take it. Knight g5. Well, knight e6 is sort of difficult to deal with, but let me chop chop and play queen b6. I'm going to hang on for dear life here on e6. c4, a nice move. Trying to break open the b file. Magnus says, knight f6, a4, b4. Which was a weird decision. It's like, why would you force the guy to close the position? Queen e2, because we're going to focus on the e6 pawn. Knight comes to e5, bishop to f4. Uh, how are we exactly are we defending this? Queen c6, that's how, by threatening a checkmate. MVL does not blunder, mate. That would have been quite a way to end this video. Knight takes d3, c takes d3, bishop c8, rook e1. Okay, uh, well, no one can guard this now. h6. And for some reason, MVL backs up. He doesn't just take on e6. g5, bishop e5, rook f8. MVL says, all right, I got no forward progress, so I'm going to route my knight back. Reroute. Bring the knight back to bring it forward later. And now... The key move of the entire match, potentially, d4. The position is opening up in the middle of the board. Chop, chop, bishop a6, rook c1. We're not going to lose this pawn. Magnus says, rook d8. What's up, bishop? Bishop back to a1. The king begins a migration over to this area of the board. Knight to d3. Oh, that's looking real good. King gets out of the way. Slide the king out of the danger over here. You know what would be nice? Landing a queen on g6. You know how we're going to do that? by putting the knight there. Rook f7, queen takes e6. This is a good backup plan. Bishop is hit. This is hit. We're threatening knight to h8 for God's sake, defended by the bishop on the other side of the board. Queen d6. Now, MVL says, Allez. Knight takes e7. Queen e7. Take, take, take. Knight f4. Rook a7. Bishop c4. You cannot take because of back rank mate, but he says, I got another pawn over there. And in this position, Magnus Carlsen... Flagged. He flagged. 13-11 for MVL. Now, that might be an underwhelming finish. But MVL is 100% deserving of the win. In this endgame, he has a rook and one pawn for a knight. He is completely winning. He will put his rook over here. But it's a difficult endgame. It's a difficult endgame. And Magnus still has a pawn and maybe a knight to create some tricks. Maybe g4, something over here. But... MVL a deserved winner. Clutched it out in the end. Didn't lose a fourth game in a row. Wins. And Magnus Carlsen, in stunning fashion, eliminated from the 2020 Speed Chess Championship. The final will begin tomorrow at 9 a.m. Pacific. That's 12 p.m., 12 noon in New York City. That is 22.30 if you are watching in India. That is... 18 o'clock, if you're watching in Central Europe, I will do commentary as Hikaru plays MVL. It's going to be on twitch.tv slash Gotham Chess. And if you're watching way in the future, because this was recommended by the algorithm, hi, 
I hope you enjoyed this video. I have many others for beginners, intermediate, and advanced players. Check out some of the playlists on my channel. I will see you tomorrow for the final recap.